You're listening to The Sizzle on Iron Skillet Radio and Iron Skillet Television. We are back again, back to The Sizzle, presented by Iron Skillet Sports. This is week three. If you did good in week two, thank me later. Like we always say, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Just keep listening, okay? I'm about to hit you all with the lab. You ready to get back to the lab? Let's get in the lab for week three. Let's go. Let's talk about some major situations going on. Hey, it's game day. Dalvin Cook is probably not going to play. Adjust your lineups now because that's going to be big. Big implications. He was like your second or third person drafted in your fantasy rounds. He was very high up there uh, as far as people to pick for the big monies in FanDuel lineups and things like that. So if you have him, take him out. Daryl Henderson's not likely to play. You might not have had him in your dailies, but you may have drafted him. So take precaution for that. I don't know if you were going to start him anyway going, you know, against the Bucs. But, hey, you know, you never know. Tua is out. I will explain why that's a big deal. Maybe not so much a big deal if you're looking for a quarterback, but if you're looking for a defense, we'll get into that later. Like we said, let's hit the lab up. At your QB's position, I think he's going to be probably my lock for a few weeks, but nonetheless, talk about Kyler Murray. I mean, the man is a machine right now. I don't know what's going on in Arizona, but, I mean, he's a number cruncher. That's the guy you want. Lock him in. He may be a little costly, but he's going to be worth it. For my advantage point, I'm going with Lamar Jackson. Listen, um, they're playing the Lions. Their running game is a little, we don't know. I mean, after him, because everybody else is hurt. And it's the Lions. Like I said, this is the advantage pick. He probably could be your lock, but it's such a good advantage. I got to put him there. Now, my surprise boomer bust position I'm going with Justin Fields. It's no secret in Chicagoland. He is starting today. That is great for him. And potentially, we don't know what to expect with first time starting against the Browns. Now, the Browns, they're pretty spotty in whatever when it comes to defense. Sometimes they're on, sometimes they're off. They're going to have to bring their A game because, just like I said, we don't know what to expect out of them. We know he's got wheels. We know he's got a little bit of an arm. Now it's time to show it, though. Browns are at home, I think. See what happens. But he's a decent pick for a decent cost on all platforms in dailies. So if you're looking for somebody to save a little bit of cash for other positions, Fields is your guy. Let's move over to the running back position. My lock today is Alvin Kamara. He is, yes, decent. Uh so-called opponent with New England, but you know he's going to get the touches. You know if they get behind, they're going to pass it to him. Right now with McCaffrey and Cook out, he's your only pretty much like all utility running back right now that's going to see the ball and land in the air. He's got to be your lock this week. From an advantage point, he a couple years ago before he got hurt would have been your lock every week, Saquon Barkley. But this week has a soft lineup against Atlanta, he has been getting more touches every week. His touching is progressing. So he might get a good 20 touches. And when a running back like him gets touches like that, he's going to score. So it's a great advantage point. My other twofer, Melvin Gordon, probably goes in your boom or bust category, but he's been looking good. He is in a split backfield, but they're playing against the Jets, and he's been doing more. But if you need a boomer bust, this is kind of fresh. I'm just reading about this. Leonard Fournette's looking to start today for the Bucs. He has a tough team to play against, but he is going to start. They will probably still share the ball, share the load, but he's your guy. So that's why he's a boomer bust, and he's going to be cheap. The other cheap person is Alexander Madison from the Minnesota Vikings because Dalvin Cook's probably not going to play. So he's going to be a cheap option. But he is a good fill-in for Dalvin Cook. He has shown it before, especially those first games that he comes in, that he's not nicked around or things like that. He's going to be fresh with fresh legs. So give him a shot. With the wide receiver position, my lock is Stefan Diggs. He has had two great weeks playing against two tough opponent, opponents, 
And this week, not so much. So why not? I mean, he's that guy. He is the after uh, Josh Allen, he is the offense around Buffalo. So he's a good pick. Let's go with the advantage. I'm going with DK Metcalf. Now, the hype has all been about Tyler Lockett. Metcalf ain't no joke either. And it's time for him to have a breakout game. I think, why not today? Plus, Lockett is the higher end person to go for. Last year, it was Metcalf's year. This year, it might be Lockett's year. But eventually, Metcalf's going to have a good game. And I think we're going to see one this week. And for my boom and bust, I got another twofer. Odell Beckham, the old EV. He is going to play today, supposedly. Expected to play against the Bears. Fortunately, hey, talk about my team if you want to, but their secondary ain't the greatest. So he's going to be like the only person being thrown to because Jarvis Landry's out. T. Higgins supposed to be out. So, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's the party, y'all. And then, <laughs> don't laugh at me, but listen to me. Hear me out. Will Fuller with Miami. Yes, I said two is out. However, Will Fuller's in, supposedly. I mean, if you remember last year, year before, when COVID first hit and everybody took all the toilet paper, that's how I feel about Will Fuller. Not that he's toilet or garbage, but that when you see him, you have to grab him because next week he's probably gone. That's how his injury career is. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, I like him. And if he can stay healthy, be my guy. But anyway, tight ends. <laughs> We're going to go with my lock is uh, my man, Hawkinson, over in Detroit. Another uh, doesn't sound like it's a soft advantage, but it is. He's playing against Baltimore. They're going to have to throw the ball eventually against Baltimore. And looking at the last couple of weeks, they have a weak spot for tight ends. And Hawkinson has been getting a a lot of targets, a lot of looks. It shouldn't change in this game. My advantage, George Kittle. He is playing the Packers. This game could be an interesting one. Both teams have, in the history, had a great history of defensive outings and people getting their helmets knocked off. This game, I think it might be, you know, candle or, you know, just con constantly hitting the lights and going with the score, running the numbers up. It could be. But if it is going to be like that, your boy Kittle is going to have that advantage with the tight end spot. My boomer bust is Zach Ertz. Doesn't sound like much of a boomer bust, but he was not expected to play. So in daily terms, his uh, value was very low. It was like in the 4,000s of FanDuel. So if you're looking for a low-end person, He's not necessarily the guy anymore. I think he's behind Dallas Goddard, but he still has value on that system. So give him a look. Now, we're going to go with our defenses to finale the whole thing. Obviously, your lock is the Broncos. Why? They're playing the Jets. Self-explanatory. Yes, it's going to cost a lot of money. They're going to be your highest person. But if you've saved money through other picks and you just happen to have that value left, Go for them. I mean, they're playing the Jets. My advantage point is the Raiders. Now, again, the Raiders are showing they're, they're not cookies. They're tough cookies. And they play against the Dolphins where their starting quarterback is out. Should be kind of self-explanatory. They're in the middle of the road when it comes to value. And they might be available in your waiver wire, too, if you're just looking for a defense. My boom or bust on the other end of that is the Jets. <laughs> Sounds crazy. Not really, because guess what? Denver's offense ain't great either. Let's just be honest. They're not going to run up the score like that. More than likely, the Broncos will get control of the game early, use a run game, run the clock out, go easy. So that's why I go with my boom or bust. But they're also like, second to last option, and I don't see them going into the negative. So that's why I have them there. So that's my week three lab. You guys have good luck in it. Get a few pennies. Do me a favor. Like and subscribe to Iron Skillet, to The Sizzle, to all my Sizzle skin syndicates out there, and we'll see you next week in week four.